Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you all today. Greetings to Superintendent General of Regnum Ministry, Dr. James Mercy O, and to Chief Chaplain, Dr. Colonel Peter Smith, to our special guest speakers, honorary members, fellow chaplains, and friends. I wish you all a very happy month of May from Cleveland, Ohio, in the United States of America. I am Her Excellency, Ambassador Dr. Anita McKaney. I am the Director of the Health Department and Professor at the Regnum International School of Chaplaincy. And I'm also a member of the International Association of Chaplains. I'm a nursing professor. And today we're going to speak to specifically the chaplains and ministers on staying healthy for their clients and their congregations in three areas. The first one is stress management. The second is going to be rest. And the third is getting your medical checkups. Sounds simple, right? But no matter how diverse we are, we all are the same underneath. That's a fact. So let me share with you my story. I work as a chaplain. I often am volunteering at the Red Cross in disaster health services and in disaster spiritual care. So in both of those arenas, it can get very busy. We're seeing to people with, that have had house fires, people that have um, undergone disasters and are recovering, and all of that while being a full-time nursing professor. So when strategy struck my home come February of this past year, where we lost three family members in three weeks, you can believe that things had to come to a halt for me, not just personally, but in ministry as well. I had to take a pause for my physical, spiritual, and mental stamina so that I could come back stronger and do events like these. It's very really hard to maintain being a spiritual leader when you are running on empty. And I mean both physically as well as spiritually. And so these three areas become very important for all of us, really. When we talk about managing stress, you want to make sure that you know when enough is enough. It is hard to see to people's needs. It's hard to meet them where they are when you are not in a good place. If you're not in a good place mentally, like I was struggling with bereavement at the time, it was not the most optimal idea for me to be working in ministry, to be ministering to others that are undergoing a crisis. So in wisdom, I took a break. It is important that you know when you've done too much, when you're feeling overwhelmed, it's always good to be able to say no, to be able to take a break to be able to step away from these things so that you can come back better. You can come back stronger, reinvigorated and ready for the task at hand. And so knowing when to say no or to step away is one of the first things, but there's also day-to-day -day stress management. Those are things like making sure you're ready for the task at hand. If you're gonna be praying with people, you probably should pray for yourself first. If you're going to be ministering to others, you should minister to yourself first. Meaning things like, Take your vitamins, meaning things like going and making sure that your family is taken care of before you take care of other people's families. There's a great scripture in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, that talks about blind guides leading the blind. That doesn't make any sense, right? It says if the blind shall lead the blind, they'll both fall into the ditch. These are the types of chaplains and ministers we do not want to be. You don't want to lead your people into a ditch. You don't want to fall into a ditch. So we have to use wisdom. Secondly, we have to get enough rest. It is important that you be rested. Ideally, most doctors, nurses, most of us medical professionals are going to tell you to get at least eight hours of sleep. Is that realistic for most people? Probably not. But I would say six to eight hours of sleep is really great. If you work internationally, as I do, then you will find that you'll be up at all kinds of hours. There are people who need me sometimes at midnight, at 2 a.m., at 4 a.m., at 6 a.m. And so it's not always the case that I can get eight hours of sleep every single night and then be ready for an 8 a.m. class the next day that I have to teach my nursing students. And so it's important for you to balance your rest. Make sure that you get enough rest on a regular basis, but then take vacation. It's okay to spend some time away. It's okay to once again say no 
take a break. Give someone else responsibility. You don't have to do everything for everyone and be everything to everyone all the time. That's not God's will for you. And it's not wise at all. So be sure to get your proper rest. And then thirdly, get your medical checkups. When I had my moment in February, I literally took off February, March, and came back a little better in April-ish, right? So by that time, I finally made a doctor's appointment, went to see my physician. They drew my blood to see where I was because I sometimes have a little anemia. And so my numbers were horrible. I, they were in the trash. They were talking about putting me on uh, transfusions every month. They were kind of scaring me. And I did not realize I hadn't taken my vitamins. I hadn't taken my iron. I was not exercising. I was getting too much rest. Like I wasn't moving my body enough. I had gained about 10 pounds. And so all of these things were literally making me sluggish, not able to pay as much attention and definitely not able to do effectual ministry. And so I had to see about me. I had to minister to myself. I actually was the co-author in a book called Ministry Before Ministry. If you're able to look it up on Amazon, I put some really good tips in there as well. But you want to make sure that you see your physician regularly. If you have insurance here in the U.S., we have insurance. You're able to go see a doctor. If you are working a job and you're able to pay for going to a clinic just to get a checkup, it's very good to do that. Guess what? We don't want to be the blind leading the blind. We don't want our people falling into ditches. We want to make sure that we take care of ourselves well enough so that we can be true servants to others. It's very, very important that not only are we physically fit, but that we are spiritually fit. Meaning, don't just quote scriptures if you haven't read your own Bible. Don't go to a prayer meeting and lead others if you haven't spent time with God yourself. It's important to be physically and spiritually fit. Otherwise, you are dragging a lot of weight behind you. Your numbers are off. You're going to be tired. You're not going to be effective. And guess what? People know. People can tell when you are not your best self. When you're not 100%, people are very well aware that you are not bringing your A game. And so my advice to all of us is to make sure that number one, make yourself number one. You need to make sure that you put yourself first. And I'm not talking about like ahead of God, but I mean, if God lives inside of you, right, you need to be number one. They always tell people when they take airplane flights, if there's going to be a crash, put your own mask on first before you attempt to help others, right? It's the same thing with your health care. It is a part of ministry and you have to minister to yourself first. If you're going to preach, you got to preach to yourself first. If you're going to pray, you got to pray for yourself first. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Some of us feel guilty for putting ourselves first and for going out and making sure that you have the things you need. You have food, your children are taken care of, your house is stable. But how can I be effective in ministry if my whole home is falling apart? And if I myself am falling apart, many of us in ministry, and in chaplaincy have had some serious health scares even this year. And some of you I've been able to minister to, to pray for, to lift you up. And so last but not least, we're here for you. All of us are. And so this is what we do. We are chaplains. We are ministers. We are those who are called to pray and to lift one another up. No matter how diverse we are on the outside, we're all the same on the inside. If you peel back the layers, we all bleed the same. We all have muscle. We all have bone. And we all have the tendency for all of those inside parts to go wrong. So I'm here for you. All of us are here for each other. So let's continue to strive to not only celebrate our diversity, but celebrate our sameness, celebrate the things that make us all alike. We are all body, flesh, and bone. And so not only should you check up on yourself, but check up on your fellow chaplain, check up on your fellow minister. If they're missing an action, call them, find out why, send them an email, a text, a message, 
follow up and let's all grow stronger together as chaplains, as ministers, as people. We want to be an example for others so that we all can grow closer to God and point others to the one who gives us health in the first place. Thank you so much.